Hello and welcome to the course of HDL Digital Circuit Design. Today's topic is step by step guide for FPGA implementation of Verilog code for clock divider. Myself Shilpa Rudravar, Assistant Professor, School of ENTC Engineering, MIT Academy of Engineering, Anandi Pune. In the previous section, we have seen how what is clock divider, what is the role of using clock divider, and uh, how to write a code uh, for the clock divider in Verilog as well as its stress bench and we have gone through the simulation also so description box i will be keeping the link of that kindly go through that if any issue so steps for implementing xdc file because whenever we want to dump that uh, particular bit file into the hardware we need to assign a xdc file that particular pin of your uot that is clock reset and clock underscore d we will be assigning in our devices and that's why we need to generate a xilinx Xilinx design constraint file. So, first already we have written code, then Xilinx design constraint file we need to generate. After that, we need to click on generate bitstream file. So, it will be creating that bit file and which we will be dumping into the hardware we are having. Now, here this is the hardware we are having in the lab, and these are the input pins and these are the output pins available. Total 16 inputs pin and output 16 pins are available. So, as per that, we have con we need to configure our uh, Xilinx design constraint file. So, here uh, clock is there, reset is there and clock underscore D is there. So, clock and reset, these are the input pins and that's why we need to assign input. But on that kit, we don't have this E3 pin. This E3 is the pin where the clock is getting generated, that crystal oscillator is connected over there and that clock frequency of 100 megahertz is getting generated. So, that E3 we need to assign anyhow. We can't assign other pin like this. This is, we can use as a manual clock, but over there for internal clock, we need to provide E3 pin. Then reset, which is we are providing V10. You are able to see this V10 over here. So this is my reset pin. And this is what is the V11, which I am configuring as a clock out. That is clock underscore D. So here I'll be observing my clock frequency. Here that internal clock will be given to the clock input and this is what is the reset I can give from the switches. So over here moving to our tool, in this already we have created this uh, Verilog file, this is the test bench. Once that has been done, I will be clicking on this and I will be clicking on schematic. Once that has been done, I will be clicking on this IO planning. Over here you are able to see this particular structure of your device you have selected and this is what is the clock so i'll be clicking here and i'll be writing e3 already have given this is the v10 and this is v11 as i told you earlier once that has been done you need to save it and once it is saved with particular file name you will be able to see this constraint file here so this is what is the constraint file created by giving that pin number so lvcmos33 that you need to assign so here you are able to see um, in the schematic, you are able to see this is what is the LVCMOS which is selected. Previously, it was might be LVCMOS uh, 18, but you need to select LVCMOS 33. So, once that has been done, you will be getting this constraint file getting created under this constraint folder, and this is what is your final constraint file where three inputs, uh, two inputs are there and one output is there. So, related to that, that LVCMOS uh, IO standard has been written, and these are the pins for that input and output once that has been done you need to click on this clock underscore d which is the code you are having in the previous session only i told you whenever you are going ahead with the simulation try to write this particular parameter as less as possible 0 and 1 in that sense only but whenever you are going ahead with the hardware as the hardware in clock frequency is very high you need to divide it by the higher value and that's why here you need to write 26, 24, 23, whatever you want as per the device you are having. So, in our case, 26 is, uh, is sufficient to see that uh, transition of the clock, blinking of the clock. And that's why I have kept as a 26. If you can, uh, you are, if you are making it as a 24 also, we will we'll be seeing what is the effect of that and the blinking of uh, that clock over there. So this is 26, I have done it and now I will be generating my bitstream file. So on the left hand side lower corner you are able to see this generate bitstream. Now after clicking it will be generating a bitstream file, it will be taking some time. Meanwhile what you need to do, you need to connect your hardware to your PC, laptop and uh, 
meanwhile this particular file is getting ready so running write bitstream so file is getting ready once that has been done we'll be dumping that into the hardware so that particular uh, bitstream generation is done now open hardware meanwhile i have connected hardware to my device or laptop okay now program device because already i have connected that that's why i did not have to add the device otherwise you need to add it so program device the bit file is uh, they are taking and done so here i am able to see green light which is blinking over here now i'll be recording this particular part and i'll be showing you how fast or how slow that particular clock is blinking depending upon this value I am changing. So at this moment it is 26. I will be changing it to lower value. Then I will be again recording that particular part and showing it to you. So till that time, uh, thank you everyone and happy learning.